Many people went to that nightclub anyway. There were two sides. They say whoever is who, I'll sit on the other side where the prince normally sits. And whoever is not who, sit on the other side, which is my side. <laughs> I didn't know anyway, but they just arranged there, I sat there. I like to sit there also because in the garden, I hear the, the water running from a small fountain and the lake, yes. Mm. I sat there and then he came and uh, we introduced each other and all that stuff. All right, and then so, I think, why did I say that again? Okay, just talk about the girl. Just told me that she went there in the club and uh, he, she was with other friends. She didn't say girls or boys, uh, but a group, or more than just her, you know. And then the uh they already kind of had uh, one too many drinks. Okay, that's what she told me. Already drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and the prince just uh, came out or leaving or going out of that uh, of that area. You know, maybe he was leaving to go somewhere. And then the girl behind her pushed her towards the prince. Just pushed her to him. Maybe she was kind of adoring him or talking about him or something like that. So they just push her towards him. And then, and then she just bump into him and she of course had to hold him. <laughs> you know, the fall like that, yeah? Yes, yes. She had to hold on to him and then she just kiss him. Wow. <laughs> eh, on the lips. F friend kiss. <laughs> real kiss. <laughs> Not just on the lips, but you know where, right? Not just the lips, but something else uh, behind the lips as well, French kiss. <laughs> but they were French, they don't mess about. When they kiss, they really kiss. <laughs> All open. <laughs> anyway, and the, the prince is so friendly, as you know he is, yeah? He kissed her back. Fine, good. And after that, you know, they... <laughs> <laughs> became uh, friends, okay? The French friends, yeah, intimate friends also. So he visited her sometimes and all that, and she dr drove him around sometimes like that. You know, they're having some good time together only. She doesn't use him for anything, and uh, it's just like a simple relationship. The point I want to tell you is that I never heard that Prince Albert has sued or filed a lawsuit to accuse her of a sexual molestation. Yes, Master. Yes. Yeah. If any woman does that to a man, I don't think a man would sue them. Have you ever heard any man sue a woman for molesting him? No. Or how do you say sexual harassment? No. no. Seldom, yes. huh? Yes. No, me, I never heard about it. So that is even true, really, just outright, right there. She really kissed him. Before that, she did not talk to him, did not have any contact with him or nothing. I just kissed him like that. But she was drunk anyway, and he maybe was also drunk, and oh, who cares? In France, they don't care too much. <laughs> In Monaco, also less. <laughs> And in Monaco, they respect women. So whatever woman wants is law. <laughs> uh, there's not too much paparazzi there, very little. It's forbidden. Paparazzi is forbidden yes, for, to report such things. And of course, Prince Albert is too uh, polite, you know, too gallant, too respectful to women in order to sue her. <laughs> he didn't sue her and uh, he just befriended her. Hmm, okay. Now, because Princess Grace of Monaco, she propagated respect for women in Monaco since she went there. So in Monaco, a woman is very, very high status. You cannot do anything wrong to a woman. You'll be finito. Hmm? <laughs> Go to jail and all that even. Now you know, huh? Lucky she's a woman and kiss the prince as a man. If the other way round, maybe it's a problem. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. But I don't think they do that in Monaco. So you see the difference, huh? Yes, master. Yes, master. If a woman kiss a man outright like that before, not even a forward or <laughs> no one in nothing, and then they become friends even. Hmm? Nobody said anything. And I heard that first hand from her. 
And later they parted, but also no big deal, friends, no problem. Nothing more afterwards. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Yes, ma'am. So even then, really kiss outright like that, a French kiss, and no, no problem, in front of everybody, in front of the public. <laughs> so in the case of the governor Cuomo, he didn't seem to do anything much like that even. Nothing happened afterward as well. So I don't know why they want to kick him out. Yes, so if it's not the influence of demons, then what then? There's no logic, is there? Yeah? No, no, no. Yeah. After all, they all know he's a good governor, been voted three times by millions of people. And that is the, the public adoration, trust. Yes. So even just a few allegations like that, I don't think they should fire him at all. About the COVID, maybe he made mistakes or his administration made that mistake, but they make it everywhere. Similar cases about COVID everywhere. Because it was so blurred, the line between the COVID and the flu or headache or other things. Common cold before, at that time. They just didn't know how to deal with it, that's all. I told you they are not medical experts. Yes, yes. Uh, no more questions, huh? Oh, yes? Yes or no? I have another question, Master. Tell me. Well, Master talked about uh, war causing the uh, hell gates to open. Master mentioned before the wars in the astral levels. Um, so is there something that opens there as well, or does it leak down to the earth? Oh, the war from the astral levels? Yes, Master talked about the, the astral level kingdoms. Oh, and then it is spilled down to the earth? Yes, Master. Oh, uh, of course it does uh, affect our earth also, but it depends on our karma. If we are good and virtuous as the whole planet or the majority, then that will not spill over to our planet. But as you know, our planet is not in good shape. People are not in good moral uh, stability. So, of course, whatever happens in the astral level will spill over to our planet, to our world. Because if the hell people get more land and inch up in more the lower heaven, then that lower heaven will also lose some power. It's not just just the territory, it's the power they lose. Yes, then they cannot bless or help humans as much. That is why. <sighs> it's not just about the territory. Huh? You understand now? Yes, Master. It's just like uh, um, the reason war in Nagorno-Karabakh. So that means the people in that region had to be refugees somewhere else in their co own country. As they had nowhere to go, they just run, 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 and then Maybe the government has to help them somehow. And then at the same time, it's very chaotic in their country, in the government, in the presidential office or the prime minister's office, because people also blame him for surrendering to the other country's policy or war. Because of that, and then he will be too busy with all that, or occupy or absent-minded. He cannot help his country that much. He cannot continue his routine work as a prime minister. People want him out, and people protest on the streets, and the opposition rose up, etc., etc. Yes, Master. And then the people who are refugees may not be able to be helped as uh, efficiently or sufficiently as if if the prime minister office has no problems, like they had recently after the war, because the prime minister ordered the surrender because he was concerned about the soldiers. Deaths, too many deaths already, just in a few weeks. You understand? Because mm. they were not prepared for war. The other countries just attacked them. They were not prepared. The, the Armenia is not like the richest country in Europe or in the world, and they normally had peace for all this time. So nobody was prepared in the heart or, or physically to deal with sudden war. And then the aftermath effect that uh, affected the, the country's uh, top leaders, office and government. You see it now? Yes, Master. Mm. <sighs> War is terrible. Nobody should ever start any. But if, if the Prime Minister did not order to withdraw and let the other country win, then there would be more bloodshed, more people would die. Yes, Master. Yes, and the other country is stronger, more equipped by a third party who want to cause trouble also. People have nothing to do. 
except to go and make trouble and bloodshed like that. I blame these people. I blame the people behind the wall. I blame the people who decide the war. I don't blame the Prime Minister of Armenia. That's why I gave him the Shining World Leadership Award for peace. Did I not? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, you see what I'm saying now? Yes, ma'am. Nobody should blame him. He's a man of peace. Of course, if he continued to fight the war, people would say, oh, he's a hero and all that. But at the cost of what? Yes, and not necessarily that he will win ever. Because his armies is not uh, able to stand up to the other country, to the aggressor country. They already prepared, they already had strategy and everything. And Armenia is not very strong and not very rich country. At least not army-wise. Hmm? So if it continues on, more Armenia will die. Everybody can see that. You don't have to ask me. You don't have to, to listen to me in order to believe that. You can see their size, or their economic situation. I was there. The country was not all that rich and powerful. Yeah. Not, not even average. Excuse me. I say that not as the offense, but as sympathy. And as a true observer, when I was there in Armenia's capital, I went around for some charity work. So it's, it's true like that. Hmm? Yes, but why did I talk about this? Oh, because you asked me about the war from astral level, right? Yes, Master. 